All right. So, uh, uh, welcome, guys. Um, we're going to be discussing Chapter 7 of the Master, Master in Shiny uh, book. And this chapter is, uh, it talks about the graphical, uh, you know, uh, section of Shiny and the graphical functions. And on the learning objectives, we're going to be uh, using the render plot function to display reactive plots and create interactive plots too. And to display images at the end, we're going to use the render image, all right? So if you are familiarized with uh, Plotly, uh, you know that they have, they have a package for R and also for Python. Uh, Shiny is trying to recreate that kind of uh, that kind of environment. Okay, so uh, we'll start with the basics, right? So we're going to be uh, let me show you here. We're going to be uh, using the, the Shiny library and also the GU. And the first uh, Shiny app that we're going to use, we're going to use the plot output function to. Uh, 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 name name our you know our arguments and you will see the code and then on the server side we're going to use the render so in summary what we're going to be using is this interaction uh, inter interactive action events which are click double click hover that's when the mouse stays in the same place for a little while just like in the web, right? That you hover into a link and then it gives you more information about it, like a tool set. And then a brush, which is a selection of more than one, uh, you know, one observation. Okay. So let's start uh, with the click, you know, the, the, the basic, the basic function. So here I already loaded Shiny and ggplot. And um, in the basic uh, uh, Shiny app, we're going to use the same you know, fluid page that we have been using, but in output plot, and we can check you know, what are the arguments there. Output plot, right? Okay, so we have an output ID, which is this one, the one that we are naming here, plot. Uh, you can change the width, you can change the height. Uh, you can do the click, which is the one that we're using and we're not going to be naming it, plug click. Or you can also use the double click, hover, brush, etc. Then on the server side, the function is going to be the input output as usual. And then the output of the plot, right? This one plot is going to be render plot. This is the function. Render plot, All right? And in render plot, we need an expression here. So our expression here is going to be to plot. This that's the base a uh, base r or a plot function, and we're going to plot the using empty cars data set. We're going to plot the weight in the x axis, and then the mass per gallon MPG on the y axis. And the resolution is going to be uh, 96. Then in the output info, info, which is the render print, and that's going to be the click, we're going to use the rec function. The input is going to be the plot click that we, uh, uh, that we name. And then it's going to give us two numbers. The number in the X corresponding to that observation and the other number in the y that is going to be the y observation. In other words, the the weight and the mass per gallon. And then you're going to use cat right to you know put everything uh, together. So it's going to give you uh, some space here, okay, with the x string and the y string. This is this is kind of a, um, a formatting formatting the, the, the app. Okay, so let's see how, how it works. <laughs> OK. 
Okay, so we have our plot, right? The weight, x, 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 x. The weight is, uh, you know, uh, in tons, uh, thousand tons. So it's 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 uh, uh, ton, uh, you know, uh, by, by two uh, pounds. And then the mass per gallon from 10 to around, uh, around 35. So let's click on this high point there, mice per gallon. And when I click, it gives me the x-axis number, which is the weight, 1.84. And then the mass per gallon, which is 33.84. So that's the, that, that's the two uh, coordinates, OK, that define that point. If you go here to the right, to see, you know, which are, you know, some of these uh, points to the right, we can see that there's one that is 5.35 weight, you know, multiplied by the, uh, by the multiplier, and then 4.7. So uh, we can see that usually lighter uh, vehicles have a greater miles per gallon than heavier vehicles, which is something that we should be uh, expecting. Okay, any comments there? No, that's everything good. Uh, everything, anything, yeah. Everything good, right? Okay. Yeah, that, that's basically a, a, a simple, you know, basic, simple, uh, uh, interactive uh, plot that you can do. do you know what it. does red? What was that? The rest? The yeah, solution? The red. R E Q. Uh, I think the red is part of this function. Okay. Let me see if I can. Because it's like you are not saving any yeah. object, you know. It's right. Like... Yeah, I guess it's part of the, you know, of this input plug click mm -hmm. that it requires uh, this. Remember that, you know, Shiny is kind of a quirky, you know, language. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, that, that's what I say, you know, that uh, Shiny for Python is more Pythonic than Shiny for R is for R. No, uh, yeah. it's like they yeah. they they try to map uh, HTML, you know. <laughs> right. So this is this is kind of a new thing, you know, in, mm -hmm. in, for Shiny. He has his own his own arguments and his own rules. So apparently, you know, instead of just doing the input click, uh, it, it it needs that that function, right? The required. So let's see if we can get a little more information about required. Uh, check for required values. Okay. Okay. So it says ensure that values are available. Okay, they're truthy. Okay, I know. I know what it means now. Okay. So he's, he's doing like a, a, a validation. He's doing a validation. Okay. So in the in the point, for example, let, let, let me run it again because that, that, that's a good that's a good that's a good question. Uh, uh, let me do it again. Let's see. Okay. Okay. We chose that, that one, that was the first, right? Okay, what happens if I choose something that is not there? You know, a point that is not there. Okay, so what is going to do? Let me see if I can put it here. Maybe you can do it at the start, Ricardo, because you, it's not rendering because it's not any new action. You plug right. in the... Right, let me see. Okay, but I think that what he's doing, let, let me see if I can, if I can click here. Let's click exactly. here that, that there, there's nothing there. Okay. Okay. What he's doing is trying to get a point that is close, the closest point to this. Okay. Okay. So in this case, it was one point five four. Let's say this, this point, one point five four. Okay. So it's giving me something really interesting here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it, it's giving me a point that is not there, but it's giving me some coordinates. It's the coordinates of the, you know, that point. But it's not, you know, a point that is valid in the data set. Okay. Mm, the, yeah. So it, it's it's not, it's not it's not doing what it, what you expect, because I, I would expect that says you know uh, you know no valid. Okay. No, that's so it, something that, that we have to see, work it out. Yeah. Did you see the cap? To... So click more than one point. 
uh, you can hear. You are going, we're going to do that, but it's not with this, uh, with the click option. Okay. Yeah, but here you can, you can, you basically can do anything, click anything, and give you some, you know, the coordinates of, of that point. At that point. Yeah, yeah, which is something that that we we don't want. You know, we want to tell the user, okay, you know, you're clicking something that is not in the data, right? Yeah, that's right. Eventually, so we'll have to do something here to tell, okay, if that's not in the data set, then you know, uh, you know, output this uh, point of valid or whatever. Okay. Maybe it can it can be related because Ricardo, when you click, mm -hmm. it creates an object of the input, and you are picking the coordinates from the plot clip. Object. Right. Right. So. Basically, it, do, it, doesn't, it doesn't have any link to the data. To the data, exactly. It's not validating the data, yeah. And that's something that you should be aware of, of course, okay? Yeah, because I, I'm, I'm clicking this, and this, this is a, a data. Mm -hmm. yeah, because I click it right in the center. But if I click this, it will still give me, uh, you know, the coordinates, right? But it's not a valid point. Correct. The data. So it's not doing, you know, it's not linking, like you said. Okay. So something to be aware. Be aware. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So let's continue. Okay. That was the, you know, our, our basic function, right? Okay. So let me see. Okay. Let me see. So the next one, because sometimes in the nodes, you know, they miss something here. Okay, so the next one is kind of interesting. Okay, and um, maybe you have used it, or maybe it doesn't. It's new for me. For me, it was me. Is this uh, is this function near points? Okay. So it says that the point events return a relative rich list containing containing uh, a lot of information. So let's run this and see and see and let's see what happens here. I think I I know what what happened. So we have the same uh, plot output, right? But then we're including something else, which is the table output, and we're going to name it data. And what we are adding here is what is called the near points. And we are introducing here in the near points uh, it says that the first argument has to be a data frame. Okay, so in our case, it's going to be empty cars. It's going to uh, accept, right, the input plug click. So when we clip, we're going to get something from the data set. And the X bar is going to be the weight, and the Y bar is going to be the MPG. So we can uh, pick up some information from that particular. So let's see what happens. Okay. Okay. So now let's go back. And now you see that there's, you know, the headers, right? You know, the, the names the, of the columns of the data set. Something that we didn't have before. So now let's choose this point, which was the one that, you know, we, we selected before. And now with that point, we have the whole the whole information from the data set from that observation. Okay, so the same thing if we click here, right? Uh, you know, we get more information about that, that observation that was on the right uh, uh, side of the of the of the whole rectangle. Let's see if we choose. Let, let's let's do the experiment. Let's see if we choose something that is not there. What happens? Blank. Okay. So at least this is going in the right direction, right? If you choose something that is not a point in the data set, it will give you information. But eventually, what we want to do is inform the user that that point doesn't exist. You know, very explicitly, it doesn't exist in the data set. In other words, just something that exists in the data set. Okay. Any questions here? So if you want to display the whole information or data set, or maybe do some, you know, some subsetting, 
uh, this is the function that you should be using, uh, the near points. Okay. All right, so let's see. Okay, here there was something very interesting here. Okay, let me see. Okay, here we, we give near points for arguments, the data frame, you know, the, the same thing that we were doing here. here. The, the near points, the help. Near points, yeah, right here. Okay, so it says that the data frame, the analyze and plot, the input event, input plot click, and the names of the variables in the, in the axis. Okay, if you use ggplot, you only need to provide the first two arguments, x bar and y bar. That can be automatically inputted in the plot data structure. So in this case, we're going to run this, but instead of a rendering, the render plot using plot, we're going to use ggplot. Okay, and see if there's there's a difference. So let's go here, right? Let's go here and run this, but we did. And of course, the you know the theme is going to change. It's going to be a ggplot theme, right? Okay. So let's select that point, right? And we got the table uh, with information on that point. We select this. If we select something that is on the data set, we get an empty uh, plot, an empty uh, you know observation. We means that it doesn't exist. Okay. So with ggplot, we only need, like, like you know, the instructions says, we only need to define the, the data frame. In the aesthetics, just name the variables that we're interested in, then the g, which is the point. All right, so this is something that I was trying to understand a little bit more. I don't know if... Uh, Someone has some experience here, but it says that you may wonder exactly what near points returns. Uh, a good place to use is the browser. So what we're going to do is in this chunk of our, let me see. Uh, Uh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. So in this one, we got the ggplot uh, as as inside the render plot by right, the function to plot the the graph. But then, if you want to use the use browsers to inspect what near points is returning in the output data in the render table, uh, instead of just doing the input click, the requirement input click on the near points, we are going to insert the browser. And let's see what happens here. Okay. So when I click that point, it's going to bring, I don't know if you can see it down there, it's going to bring the browser, right? Okay, because that's the instruction in the browser. And then, in the browser, we're going to use this instruction near points and cars input clock point. And what it's going to give me is the information of that point from the data frame. Okay, but instead of just using the the display right the display of the of the shiny app okay is going to give it in this you know in the console all right uh 
maybe there's some practicality to, to this, but I'm still trying to say, you know, if, if this is something that, you know, we should be doing. Okay, yeah. because for me, it's more, you know, it, it makes more sense, you know, to do it interactively, right? Okay, but maybe you want to inspect uh, in that sense or debug uh, your, your app. And then, you know, you'll have to use this browser because it mimics the environment, the reactive environment of Shine. Okay. Yeah, I got look. The browser function is used mm -hmm. uh, to debug the, the app. Right, exactly. You have, you have, yeah, you have some prior steps and then your Shine app broke, broke after that point. Mm -hmm. You put right. the browser there. And then you will have your all your environment that is really hard to do it because there is mm -hmm. no environment that you can run with input clean. You know that's, that's yes. something that just, so only happens in the a function level. So now right. at that moment you you have the environment exactly mm -hmm. as it runs in shiny. So I have seen that for functions, but in shiny I think that is even more useful to do it because you can right. download the objects to the, to the global environment. Yeah, I, I think that this is more like a toy example of what you could use, like you say, you could use the browser for debugging. So if, it, if it's a more complicated shiny app and there's something that is happening that you understand, you know, why is this happening? Maybe, you know, this will be a good step for, for debugging. Yeah. Yeah, I've, but this is the debugging I've, environment. You're exactly. Correct. Yeah, yeah. about okay. debugging, I don't see it's not practical. You know, you don't, you don't do. Yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because you know, I mean, it, this is a very simple, you know, uh, function here. Yeah. Yeah, and it's working as expected, and that that that's so uh, there's no reason Correct. to go to the Cor environment. Correct. Yeah. All right. So we took care of that, right? Okay. Let me see other point events. Okay. So now we're going to be doing the brushing, which is another way of selecting personal cloud uh, using brush, which is a rectangular selection. So this is the one that I think was Femi uh, was uh, asking, you know, how to uh, select more than one, uh, more than one point. Okay, I, I think yeah, yeah, this is the one. Yeah. Okay, so in brushing, what we're going to do is instead of uh, doing the you know, in the server function, what you're going to do is change in the output data render table instead of doing you know this function with correct input click and near points. I'm going to use the brush points. Okay, so in the brush points, uh, brush points. Okay, it's in the same is the same help as their points. I'm going to use the, the data frame and also uh, you are going also to change instead of click, remember click, plug, 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 click. It's going to be in the UI, you have to change uh, instead of click brush, and you have to then you know and put a name, instantiate basically the the argument. Uh, or, act or activate the animal with plug brush or whatever you know, name you want to put it. And this is it. The data frame input and the name that you you got to the argument. You, you, you name the argument brush. So let's run this brushing. Okay, so now we have the same display, right? The data set, data table. We are using the ggplot, but now we can select more than one. Okay, so let's say if you want to expect this cluster of points, right? They have all the same, the same, all the same weight, right? So this is the this is the result, all right? Uh, the way here, yeah, more or less the same. Different cars with the same way, but they have different mass per gallon indicators. Okay. 
okay? And you can go crazy or, you know, do something like this. <laughs> or you can do this, you know, check this, this point here, okay? So brushing, remember, brushing, clicking is just one point. Uh, brushing is for, you know, selecting more than one point, okay? Any comments, questions? No, that's a really simple functionality. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're going to go a little bit deeper, right, into this uh, uh, these functions. And one thing that is interesting here is that it starts explaining, uh, you know, the reactive, the reactive functions, reactive valve, for example. And uh, the author says that they're going to go you know, in detail about reactive valve in chapter 16. Uh, but he wants to show us here because it's so, such a useful uh, technique. So it's kind of the react valve. Let's see what what is this all about. React valve. Okay, it creates a single a reactive value, that function. And it's used to construct a reactive value object. So one of the things that you're going to notice is that some of these functions only work in the in the shining part. Okay, so for example, if I try to run this in the console, okay, let's see if I if if it, if it runs, it's going to be an error. Okay, so it, it only works in the shining part, or probably. In the debugging environment, which is you know the same environment again. So it, it says here that the big difference is that you can also update a reactive value and all reactive reactive consumers that refer to it will be computed. Remember that reactive, the you know the magic thing that it does is that it only updates from the graph, only updates the objects that needs to be updated. If the graph is complex and you change a value, the graph will, will, will know which are the objects that it needs to change. It, it, won't, it won't change the whole thing, okay? And that's, that's what you know, basically reactive activity is all about. So you can use this you know, to create uh, reactive, you know, reactive values, okay? So let's see how, how we do it. Um, we're going to create a data frame, okay, with X, following our distribution of 100 uh, observations, and Y of 100 observations too. In the fluid page, we're going to use the plot output again with plot, click, plot, click. And in the server, in the server, we're going to use the function with the input output session. And we're going to create a reactive value of distance, okay? So what this is going to do is that when it shows shows all the all those observations in that data frame, when I choose one point, it's going to give me, depending on the magnitude of the point, it's going to give me an indication of the distance of all the points from that point. All right. So this is what you know this function uh, uh, does. Right, so let, let's see it, and then you know, let's let's go back and and explain a little bit more. So I'm going to uh, read the data frame, right? I'm going to run this. Okay, remember this is a you know uh, a, a, a main a main data set from from those uh, random numbers. So let's say that we, I choose this point, this point here. Let's see, okay. Here, okay. Let's say if I choose this point here, okay? See what happened? Because we're saying that the, that distance, the reactive value is going to be equal to the size of the point. What is happening is that the closest points 
okay, we, from the ones selected, are going to be a little bit smaller, the size. And the points that are farther from that selected point are going to be, the diameter is going to be bigger. Okay, so it will give me right away a representation, depending on the size of those points, on the magnitude of the size, how far are those points from the one select? Okay, so let's say if I select this one, the one to the right. Okay, so right now everything changes, right? The magnitude of those points change. Now this one is the one, one, one of the closest. It has the small, you know, the small magnitude, and this to the left, they have the larger, uh, you know, diameter or magnitude or size, representing how far is from the point zero. Any questions or comments from what we're doing here? Everything good? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, these, ah, the, you are using the this function the, for distance. Oh, well, sorry, Ben. The, the distance is a, is a value. Oh, it's, it's a value. A value yeah. that is, that, that, that is uh, defined by this function, reactive value. Okay? Yeah, in this case, and it's going to be... be one, one to one yeah, hundred. And in this case, it's going to be from one to the number of... Uh, the number of reservations in the data. Okay, that's going to be the range, the range of the values of this. And because I'm defining distance at that, that reactive value, okay, and I'm saying that the size, the ggplot, the size of the, you know, of the points relative to the one selected is going to be equal to the distance. So when I select a point, it recalculates distance. So you have all you, you follow you the, follow me? Yeah, maybe I, I'm just checking the near points function because that should just render one number. Because right. remember you see near points right. just for one row, one row mm -hmm. right now it should be rendering one hundred yeah. points in a vector, numerical vector. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, you see you see in the observed event. Yes. Exactly. Oh, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So basically, we have here the data frame that we are creating, then the input with the plot clip, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. and then we have new new options that we were we weren't using before. So Correct. we have all rows true. At this, they say true, and they are taking from that data frame the this, the this on a. Uh, no, but that's not from that list. You go to the right. Okay, you you are defining. Let, let me see if I can if I can get a better. You're defining the range here, okay? And you're you're saying that distance and reactive value. So in other words, you know, if distance changes, it's going to change any object that depends on game in the graph, right? No, that would be just the number of rows. So basically, yeah, they are saying yeah, you you're, you're defining the limit. The exactly. limit of, of this. 100. But, but instead of just saying rep, you could say rep 1 and row df. You could say that. But because you are using React well, you're telling to Shiny, hey, you know, when you see a, a change in this, in this value, you are going to update everything that distance touches in the graph, in the reactive graph. Okay? That's what reactive value does. You you get you get the, what what I'm trying to say? Yes, I understand. I understand. Okay, good, good. Okay, so when you define this as an observed event, because you are doing okay, when you point, you know, when you click an observation, you have to do a recalculation of the distance. Correct. Correct. Right. Right, depending on on the point that I'm that I'm clicking, and All this right. is this is what you're telling. You know what the distance is going to be for the other, you know the other the other points, okay? Because you're not changing the selector, you're changing the result. 
So when you do that, you're going to recalculate distance and you're going to use it in GD plot as the slice of it. Yeah, that, okay. that's right. Okay. Good, good. Yeah, yeah like I, I said, you know, I, I, this I just is... pointing the, the result of near points. Right. Yeah, the near mm -hmm. points function right now is just rendering one vector with 100, with a length of 100. Based on the, you go to the right, you have a dollar sign. Mm -hmm. So it, it's picking one, maybe hiding co a new column that, that you didn't create the, the these no. on the score. So yeah. Right. That's the that's the the vector they are updating every time you click. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it's great. Okay. Maybe they are taking oh. the Euclidean distance and that, that using that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's do one more. Okay, and this one is going to use the, the double click, right? Okay. And um, what it's going to do here, let me see. OK, a more complicated idea. I want to use a brush, progressively add points to a selection. Here, I display the selection using different colors, but you can imagine many other applications. To make this work, initialize reactive ball to a vector of flows, then use brush points and to add and, you know, the, the vertical vertical line to add any points under the brush to the selection. Okay, so let's see how this works. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's, it's better to visualize it first and then you can go, you can go to the code. Okay, so here, what, what we're doing is, you see this legend here, selection through a false, right? So we're doing here, let's say if we select this set of points, right? You see that it changed the color? Yeah, now it's red. Now it's red, right? Okay. So what happens if we keep select? They change, right? Because yeah. you are, you know, selecting those points. So let's go back. Let's go back to the code and see what's going on. So in this one, we are using, or you see empty cars, we're not using the one that we created, the, the random ones. Uh, plot output, we are naming plot, we're using the brush, you know, to select uh, several points and we're using the double click, okay? So what's going to happen is that, if I'm not mistaken, If I use double click right there, it goes back to the original state. You saw that? I mean, you didn't see the double click, but you saw the effect of the double click. Okay, so let, let's go back to here. Let's say if I select this and I select this. Okay, those are my selections, right? If I double click right now, it will go back to the original state. That's what double click here is, is doing. That's the reason for this plot reason, okay? So here you are, uh, you know, creating a selected, which is the reactive valve, and the rep is false, right? With the end rows of the empty cars. You know, how many? How many do we have? The observed event is going to be the plot brush, right? Yeah, and this is the one that, you know, we allow us to select uh, you know, more than one point. Okay, so that's, you know, pretty, pretty straightforward. But there's another observe event, which is the flood reset, okay? And when you double click, right? Double click option, flood reset, this is what's going to happen. Everything goes back to false, you know, to the to the false state of the, of the, you know, of, of the selection. Because here, when you were brushing, you were changing, right? You were changing that indicator originally to true, which is what, what you have with, with the colors. And here, in the GT plot, the color uh, is going to be, 
uh, you know, it's going to be sent by the select. Okay, by the select. Uh, let me see. By the select. Where's the select here? Okay, select here. There you go. Here. Okay, you are creating another. Can create another column based on the reactive value of the select. So you're creating another column in empty cars that allows you to then create the ledger in the in the plot. All right. So the select is going to be the color, which is going to be green. It's a binary, it's going to be green, true. Uh, you know, green false, uh, true, true red. Okay. This is the escape color here. Hey, pretty, pretty nifty. Hey, that's that's a really clever way to. I know. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, these guys are something. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's a really interesting way to to reset. All right. Yeah, to reset you don't need to take all to to false again, and that's it. Correct. Yeah. I mean, if I if I leave it here, let's say, okay, if I don't if I don't double click, it stays it stays you know you know it's selected. Part, but if you double click, it goes back. Nice, very nice, very nice. Okay, so let's continue. Okay, it talks about some interactively limitations. Okay, uh, the basic flow is that JavaScript captures the most events, shiny ads. Says the most event that I'm back to are telling the app that the input is now out of date. Those three react to consumers as they computed, what up? Oh. So um, we just, we just, uh, I'm going to discuss two more. So here, what we're going to do is the following. Uh, let me run this and then explain. Okay, so here, what we are doing is for this plot, right? Uh, this plot is just, uh, you know, some uh, normal, uh, you know, uh, random random numbers following norm distribution, 2020. Um, let's see, yeah, plot run number 2020, that's the plot here here and then what we want is we're going to uh, use some sliders right slider input height and another slider input width and the plot output is going to be plot with the you know the full values of width to 50 height to 50 which are the ones shown there you know when you uh, start running the app then in the output plot, render plot, width is going to be a function of this, right? Of this input width, which is the input that we're going to do right here. And height is going to be also a function of the input height. So what it's going to do is that I can change the height. Okay. And when I change the height here in the slider, it's going to change in the plot and also uh, the width. Okay. So this is something that you can use to just change, you know, the uh, the dimensions, the dimensions of the whole of the whole plot. Okay, the prism. All right. Questions, comments? Okay, so I, I, don't, I don't see a useful application of that, but this is awesome, oh. you know. It, yeah. Come from BI perspective, that's something that mm -hmm. Power BI cannot do. Give the user the ability to to size the element as they need. Uh, I mean, you, you do it manually. <laughs> no, no, giving the ability. I mean, you, you yeah. are giving the application, the one that you're giving the, the dashboard cannot do the, the, the resizing. No, 
You need to do it by no. yourself. No, he's the developer that does this. Like, exactly. But you. now the yeah. user can do it. So exactly. it's, it's, I see a lot of power here. Oh, you yeah. have more, more, more options. And, and this is what you need, you know, to change, you know, any dimensions of any plot. This is what you need. Really. So you can copy this as a boilerplate. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So the last one is going to be using the render image uh, because I don't have, you know, all this, uh, you know, this, 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 uh, uh, this uh, information, you know, the database. What I did was run the run the shiny app uh, that is, you know, in the in the web. So let's run it. Let me see if I if I have it. I'm not gonna have it here, but let's run it here. Okay, so let's see. You see, I see, I see. There, puppets. Okay. So what what we're doing here? Okay. So we have a. Let me go back. Let me go back to the the thing. So we have a, a table. Okay, name for grid, ID, and author, and these are the values in the table. Then we're going to select an input, right? Pick and read choices, set names, which are uh, which are these choices here. Okay, the ones that are in the table, or we Labrador, and Spanish. And what it's going to do is going to if you if you choose Corgi is the default. So if you choose Labrador, it's going to give you Labrador image, uh, copy, copy Labrador image. And if you choose Spaniel, it's going to give you a Spaniel a puppy, a Spaniel puppy image. Okay, so how, how do we do this? Yeah. Okay. So we select with the, with the, the UI fluid page. We said that the select input is going to be an ID, a pick and read. The choices are going to be the ones that are uh, here in the table, right? Puppy's ID and puppy's breed. Uh, the output is going to be source. HTML output is going to be source and image output is going to be. So in the server, uh, output photo, right? Uh, this one, output photo is going to be rendering an image and it's going to be a list, okay? where the source is going to be the file path of the puppy photo, and you're going to paste it, right? The dot JPEG uh, extension to the, you know, to that, to that file. The content is going to be a JPEG, and, the, and this is the width. Okay, delete file, false. And then in the source, which is the HTML output, the info, the render UI, Okay, take this one, render UI. Uh, you need an expression, environment, quoted, output arts. Let's see what's going on here. So in the render UI, you have the info, which is the puppies. And this is the, you know, this is the, 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 the subset in the data frame where puppy's ID is going to be equal to the input ID, right? The one that we are, you know, picking here. Uh, draw false. And then you're going to do an HTML, right? Glue, this is the glue package. And you are going to, you know, retrieve this, you know, uh, this URL here, okay? With the photo, and let me see if there's an author here. Original by reader, exactly. So he's bringing two two pieces of information: the photo itself, and then the author on a splash because this is from the splash uh, data site. Okay. So I guess uh, Hadley wants to uh, avoid any you know any 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 uh, liability here. <laughs> Uh, yeah, saying, you know, yeah, uh, you know, putting that, you know, this is not mine, this is some somebody else, uh, you know, photo, which is clever. <laughs> All right. 
So I think this is the one that it requires a little bit more creativity, right? Okay, because all the all the uh, all the moving moving parts that it does, but but it's really neat, you know, the result. And that's what I like about shiny, you know, even though the the core could be a little bit quirky, <laughs> uh, the results are, are are really nice. Okay, especially from the user, you know, side side of things. Yeah, I was thinking how I could add links to my Shiny app, and this is the way. This is the way, yep. HTML yeah. app is the, is, the, is the way to do it. Yeah, yeah, you just follow this recipe, and, you know, it, it should work. Okay, so summarizing, right, you know, uh, it says that visualizations are tremendously powerful, I agree, you know, a picture is worth a thousand words, right? Uh, to communicate data and communicate, you know, your your results. Uh, so the next part, you're going to learn to needs to provide feedback to users about what's going on in your app, which is one of the things that you know we experience in the club part that we didn't get any feedback that there was not an observation that it was valid in the data. Okay, so I think uh, Kianto should be should be doing that the next session. Yeah, thanks, Ricardo. I think it was a great introduction. I think maybe using Blobly would be more, more useful because taking yeah. the click to the server side, it doesn't sound like a good idea. <laughs> right. I know that you use Blobly 